We welcome everyone to New Hope today, whether you're here, in the building, in the parking lot, online, wherever you are, we're glad you're here. The Spring Cella uh, Collection for the Kentucky Mission is March 21st. Food and hygiene items are the focus of this collection. A new freezer will be delivered to the mission, so frozen meat will boost the protein intake of the deliveries. The mission will now have three freezers to accommodate frozen meat until it can be delivered to the residents. If you would like to donate meat, please talk to Bob Carpenter about the specifics. There are lists on the information table, and Bob Carpenter is here today. So, Bob, why don't you just stand if there's somebody here that doesn't know who you are, so that if they want to talk to you, they can. Okay, there are still a few baby bottles. Um, on the information table, if you would like to fill one with change or dollar bills or checks, we will take all three contributions. Um, we support John and Gloria Trussell as missionaries to France, and we received a report from them this week. The new year, 2021, is well underway. Here in France, we are so relieved to not have a third confinement in our territory, although there is talk of it happening again. Police enforce it here and fine heavily for those who break the rules. John has been investing in another book on the prophetic check and balance. It was published six weeks ago. He backs up a church network, Antioch, and is actually gone this weekend to three different cities with the leader. After COVID has so affected church attendance, several of the churches need wisdom in moving on. Things are confusing with the virus and the rules. The Antioch Network has 1,200 churches in Africa, and John will be going there when it is permitted by this government and Africa. Gloria is purchasing fabric from Holland for the use of the African women who will be taking sewing lessons with her. We bless you and thank you for your gifts and prayers. Blessings in Jesus' name, John and Gloria. That takes care of our announcements today, so the nursery children and kids' church children can line up at the back door. Thank you. The ushers can come forward now. <clears throat> We're going to take up our offering. We have uh, several prayer requests. Um, keep in prayer. Uh, AJ and Presley, um, I don't know, most of you probably know they're the the little young man and, and girl that come with uh, Lincoln and Susie bring them on Sunday and, and uh, we bring them to church. AJ and Presley are in Tennessee right now and uh, they talked to Susie yesterday and, and uh, talked to Grandma. They're with their Grandma and Grandpa down there. And they said they're doing well. Um, they're taking them to church. They enrolled them in school. And the kids miss everybody up here. So just want to let you know that. You know, in the ministry and as a church, you know, we touch a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And uh, sometimes you touch them for a while and, and then you don't see them for a while. And, and it's, it, it varies, you know. And this, uh, this week I got a phone call from uh, a young man. When he called me, I didn't recognize him at all. I thought it was AJ, actually. And I said, is this AJ? He said, no, this is Chris. And... Uh, then I realized who he was. I hadn't seen Chris probably in 30 or 35 years. Um, he used to come to church, uh, helped his family a lot. And uh, Chris had been through a lot. He's uh, been on drugs. And he was at Cleveland Clinic when he called me. And he had a caseworker who was talking to me at the same time. And in the process, he, he told the caseworker, he said, well, he 
some, I know, they must have asked him about a pastor or something. He, he mentioned me after 30 or 35 years. So, point being, you never know the impact you have on somebody's life. Sometimes you have them for just a little bit, you know, and you think, well, what was that all about? Well, we trust the Lord that when the Lord ministers to people, no matter what, that it accomplishes what he wants. So, so we just need to keep reminding ourselves of that and, and just thankful for, for lives that have been touched. Um, we ask you to keep in prayer um, Paula Walter's mom, Wanda. Um, she's, she's been battling cancer and they, put a, they, they had to do a procedure on her. So, so we want to keep her in prayer. Um, glad to see Melissa's back today and walking, walking slowly, walking. <laughs> And uh, keep Susie in prayer. She continues to heal her in her shoulder. She's going through therapy. And just pray that her healing continues. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence with us, Lord. And, and Lord, we thank you for reminders of what you're doing. Lord, sometimes we can forget or don't even know what's, what's all happening, Lord. And, and we thank you that we, we can see times when what you've done is... Uh, is happening and is still happening even though we don't maybe know about it. Lord, we pray you be with Chris and Lord, just continue to touch him, Lord. I pray you just help him to continue to reach out to you and to trust you and, and Lord, just heal his body. Lord, we, we pray for AJ and Presley that you continue to watch over them and just bless them while they're in Tennessee and just uh, help them to just uh, stay close to you. Lord, we thank you for Melissa getting better and being able to get up and walk and Continue to be with Susie and just strengthen her shoulder, Lord, and heal her. And Lord, we pray for Wanda. Lord, we pray you continue to be with Wanda. Just uh, pray that you just watch over her and just keep her and, and just uh, help her to stay close to you. We thank you for taking care of her. Lord, we just pray you just bless this offering now. We thank you that we can give back to you a part of what you bless us with. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Continue to work on the building project. Uh, I I've, I've sometimes forget just what all I've told you, but the lawyers are still working on the land and trying to get that all straightened out and get that so we can purchase the land. Talk to an architect, I think it was this week, Monday, I think. Anyway, the architect told me what he thought the project was going to cost, and it discouraged me so bad I didn't know what to do. <laughs> he, uh, he put the figures so high, I went, oh, we can't do that. Anyway... And uh, after later in the week, he called me back and said um, that he thought we could put the structure up for $170,000 with material and put it up. So that made me feel a little better. So, so it's kind of, I feel like it's a roller coaster and uh, we just keep moving forward through the process. So just uh, ask you to just keep praying for wisdom and uh, decisions we need to make through that time. So. For the next uh, two weeks, I'm going to be talking about prayer. Um, I'm doing an introduction today, and we're going to talk about some different kinds of prayers. And then next week, I'll mainly talk about some more different types of prayers. You know, when we think about prayer, you know, the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us how to pray. And then we're going to look at that scripture in a minute. But, you know, when I think about prayer... I think, you know, how do you teach somebody to pray? And I, I struggle with that just from this standpoint. You know, I believe we pray out of a relationship. We pray out of a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And, you know, you don't teach people how to have relationship. You know, the people you have relationship with, you don't say, well, teach me how to talk to my very close friend. Well, you know, they're your very close friend. You know how to talk to them. You're, you're, they're your best friend. You know, nobody has to teach you how to talk to your best friend. And I think sometimes in the same way that we have to understand that when it comes to talking to the Lord, that we do it out of a relationship. We do it out of a relationship. And so we just naturally talk to him. So, you know, I want us to keep that in mind as we do look at some aspects of prayer, but mainly it's out of relationship. 
And so I want to look at the prayer that Jesus told his disciples. He says, pray in this manner. You know, pray like this. Here's, here's something to give you an idea. And he starts out in Matthew, the, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse. He says, our Father, hallowed in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or our sins. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How does he start out? He starts out by addressing our Father. That's a relationship. He starts out by saying you have a relationship. He's your Father. He's your Heavenly Father. So we start out by saying our Father. Now which Father? You know, we have fathers. Our Father in heaven. And then he says, holy is your name. Holy is your name. We acknowledge who he is. Holy is his name. The name that's above every other name. The name that we hold holy. Holy is your name. And then he says, let your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, have your way in this earth. Have your way. Have your way. Now, as I look around, I don't think everything is happening is God's way. So my prayer is, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. I want your way to be done. I want your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. I want that to happen here now. And then he goes on to say, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, take care of my daily needs. Take care of my daily needs. You know, I acknowledge that you're the one that takes care of my daily needs. The Bible says, the eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord. You give us our meat in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living being. Lord, I acknowledge that what we have comes from you. So, Lord, supply our daily needs. And it's not my wants. Wants are blessings and they're extra. And you get, you get those things. I'm not saying you don't get them. But we ask for our daily needs to be met. And then we say, forgive us our sins. And the catch is, it's not a catch, but the reality is, forgive us our sins the same way I forgive other people. Oh. Do you ever think about that? For, forgive me the way I forgive other people. The same measure, the same, the same manner, the way my attitude. Forgive me the way I forgive other people. Wow. It makes you think about forgiveness a little differently. You know, forgive me the way I forgive others. Don't lead me into temptation. Don't keep me from situations that may cause me to go astray. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me not to get in those situations. Keep me from evil. Protect me. Protect me. Keep my family from evil. Keep my children from evil. Evil's all around us. Evil's all around us. Bible says, where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. It's all around us. Lord, protect us. Keep us. And then he closes with, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Acknowledge, okay, Lord, you've got the power. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory forever. And so that's a pattern that gives us some things to think about. Reminders, keeps us on a right track. You know, keeps us headed in a direction. When I think about prayer, I always think about the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. One of the shortest verses in the Bible. You ought to remember this one. Pray without ceasing. That's pretty easy. I used to think that pray without ceasing meant I had to walk around all the time praying. You know, pray, don't, you know, pray all the time, which I think we have to have an attitude of prayer all the time, acknowledging that the Lord's one around us in charge. We look to him, we trust him. 
pray without ceasing. But I also believe it means pray without stopping. Don't quit. Don't quit. Sometimes I think we aren't as persistent as we should be in our prayers. You know, we need to, we need to keep praying. We need to keep reminding. Lord, I still need help. Lord, I'm still praying for somebody. Lord, I'm not, I, I'm not giving up. Lord, because I look to you and I trust you, so Lord, I'm, 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 I'm hanging in there. I just want you to know that. When somebody's persistent, what does that do to you? Well, you know, if they're coming to you and they're persistent, it's like, oh man, they, why don't they just let go? Why don't they give this thing up? Sometimes our children, do you ever have a time when your children were persistent? You know, they just wouldn't give it up. You know, and sometimes after a while you go, okay, okay. You know, now I'm not saying we can just wear God down. I don't know that it's our motive to wear him down to where he'll finally do what I want him to do. But I think it's an idea of us being persistent that, we, you know, we really believe this. Jesus told a parable in, in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. He spoke a parable to the people that men ought to always pray and not lose heart. And not lose heart. See, it's prayer, but don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't get tired. And he said there was a, in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though I do not fear God nor regard man yet because this woman widow troubles me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? You know, he says, you know, be persistent. Be persistent. Don't give up. There's things worth fighting for. Sometimes I think, you know, Christians, we don't have no fight. We don't have no fight. We don't fight for nothing. We don't fight for what we think is right, what God desires. And I, when I say fight, I mean pray. We won't pray. We won't continue. We won't persevere. We don't really believe that, well, I don't know if God's really going to do it. You know, it says, when the Son of Man comes to this earth, will he find faith on the earth? What's he going to find? How's he going to find us? Is he going to find us faithful? Is he going to find us trusting him? Irregardless of our circumstances. See, that, 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 that means you're going to do it irregardless of what's going on. Lord, this doesn't look good. Lord, I don't like where this is going. Lord, I don't like what's happening. I don't, this isn't right. This isn't the way it ought to be. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. Will he find faith? Will he find faith in us? Will he find us looking to him and trusting him? If we don't fight for some things, who's going to? And I, when I say fight, we fight spiritual battles, folks. We fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and forces. We fight. We fight. We fight. What's our tools? Prayer. Prayer. Prayer is one of our biggest tools, but we have to have faith. We have to not get tired. We have to not give up. It's so easy sometimes to look at, well, oh, that's not working. You know, I think about the young man, Chris, you know. Wow. You know, 30 years, he's been through hell and back. He's ruined his life, his physical being. But God's still reaching out to him. Still reaching out to him. You know? And I, I know his mom and dad are Christians, his stepdad. I know they're Christians. I know they're praying. I know they're praying. And I'll bet you they've thought times, what good's it doing? 
You know, they're human. At least I thought, well, what good's it going to do? But I don't think they gave up. They didn't give up. They persevered. They persevered. So when we think about praying, it's not about throwing up statements and saying, okay, God, do this. Oops, he didn't do it. Oh, well, I guess he doesn't like me or he doesn't want to, he's not paying attention. But we persevere because we have faith in him. We have faith in him. We have faith in him. And so we trust him. We trust him. So that's how we pray. We pray. And we pray and we pray. And we pray when we think it doesn't do any good. You know? When you get to that point, it's like, well, I don't know if it's doing any good. Well, we keep praying. We keep praying. We pray without ceasing. Without ceasing. So I want to look at some different reasons to pray. First one, and these aren't in any specific order, but this first one is a prayer of adoration. In Psalms, Psalms 148, Psalms 148, verse 13. It says, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. Praise his name. Praise his name. Who is he to you? What's his name to you? Well, Jesus said, when you pray, pray our father. You know, I believe we pray to him because he's my father. My father in heaven. He's my father. And his name is to be exalted. His name is to be exalted. His name is to be held high above every other name. Where do, you, where do I place him in my life? Where do I place him in my life? What's his position? Is his name the name that's above every other name? Or is his name a last resort? His name. So we honor him. And you can do that anytime. A, a prayer of praise and adoration is one that you can do anytime. No matter what's going on, I can say, Lord, thank you for being there. Thank you for being my father. I honor your name. I honor who you are. And I believe along with that, a prayer that goes a lot along with that is in uh, a prayer of thanksgiving. In Psalms 100, verses 4 and 5. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Well, in order to come into his presence with thanksgiving, you've got to be thankful. You've got to be thankful. It says, come into his presence. So I'm already thankful before I get there. I come into his presence with thanksgiving. I live a thankful life. I'm thankful. There's always things to be thankful for, no matter how bad things are. There's always something to be thankful for. If nothing else, I can be thankful for just God being who he is. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I can always pray a prayer of thanksgiving. You know? As you're driving or walking or looking around, you can say, Lord, I'm so thankful for what you've done. I'm so thankful for your creation. I'm thankful for who you are. Lord, I'm thankful that you're at work. I'm thankful you have a plan. I'm thankful you have a purpose. Thankful. We can always be thankful. Because God is good. He's merciful. He's merciful. His truth endures towards everyone. It's kind of acknowledging that God's in charge. You know, it helps us remember who's in charge. Okay, Lord, I'm thankful because you're in charge. I think sometimes if we think we're in charge, and if we try to be in charge, I think our thankfulness hurts a little bit. Because sometimes when you're in charge, things don't go so well. Sometimes we, <coughs> we think it does. We think we got control. But isn't it interesting when we lose control? When we lose control. 
We don't have control. It makes us pretty vulnerable. There's times in life when we lose control. Sometimes, some you're all you're all, you know you and I we're all going to face times when we're not in control. You will get to some place where you're not in control. And you may think, well, no, I won't. I'm telling you, you're going to get to a place where you're not in control. Sometime. Sometime. And it's at those times when we have to say, okay, Lord, I'm thankful for who you are. I trust you. I trust you. I admit I'm not in control. Lord, that makes me nervous. That makes me uneasy. You can say those things. But then, Lord, I know you're in charge. And Lord, I know I can trust you. I can trust you. And so we can always be thankful. Always, always be thankful, no matter what's going on. Now, I don't think we should always have to be thankful for what's happening. You know, there's things that happen that I don't, I'm not thankful for the things that happen. But I'm thankful that in the midst of it, God is still there. That he's still in charge. He's still in charge, and I can trust him. I can trust him. The third one is a prayer of confession. You know, sometimes that's just admitting the things we don't want to say. In Psalms 32, 5, it says, I acknowledge my sin to you. and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And you forgive, forgave the iniquity of my sin. I acknowledge my sin. That is so hard for people to do. So hard. Nobody wants to admit they're wrong. We'll fight to prove we're not wrong. We'll, we'll do all kinds of stuff to prove we're not wrong. And then if we are wrong, we won't admit it. You know, well, maybe I should. Well, I'm not going to admit it. The Bible says, first, I acknowledge my sin to you. I came clean. I admitted my sin. We have to be willing to admit what we've done. Now, I believe there's a couple different ways that that happens. I believe that sinners are separated from God. Okay? And so sinners separated from God have to admit their sin, their condition. In, in Luke 18, 13, a tax, Jesus, he told a parable again, but he says, the tax collector stood afar off, and he would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me as I'm separated from you. You know, I believe that, you know, sinners are people separated from God. I believe that Christians can sin, but we're not separated from God. But sinners who are not his children are separated from him. So their confession needs to be, Lord, I confess I'm separated from you. I need you. I confess that I have sinned. I confess that I'm a sinner and that only what you've done will forgive my sins. What has he done? He died on a cross and shed his blood that cleanses us from all sin. So now, when we make that confession, we can have a relationship with him. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my condition. I acknowledge I'm apart from God. I acknowledge I need you. I need a Savior because I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that. It has to, it starts there. It starts there. Romans 3.23 says, We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We all need a Savior. And when we acknowledge that, we become a child of God. Because His blood cleanses us from all sin. And then I believe that God's people can sin. I believe we can still not do the, all the things that God wants us to do. 
that you know we all have the capacity to allow our flesh to do things. In 1 John 1 8, and I read this a lot at communion. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So if we fail, if we don't do something that God wants us to do, we can acknowledge that sin and God will forgive us. But we have to be willing to acknowledge. We have to be willing to confess. We have to be willing to say, you know what? I made a mistake. You know, we always, we call sins a mistake. You know, it sounds better. It's still sin. You can call it whatever you want. But, you know, sin is sin and you can call it a mistake or whatever. But, you know, it's sin. Lord, I've sinned. I've sinned. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. It's a prayer of confession. We confess, Lord, I need you. I need you. So I believe as, as a person who's never accepted the Lord, who's never made that prayer of confession, I believe that's the first and starting point, is we have to acknowledge our sin. Talking to people sometimes about heaven, they'll say, well, I think I'm going to heaven because, you know, I try to do the right thing. I want to tell you something. If you're trying to do the right thing, you're falling short. You're, you're, you haven't made it. You can't. You, how many right things are you going to do? How, how many? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not going to work. I tried to do the right thing. So then what? You hope that I get enough right things to outweigh the wrong things? I mean, how does that work? How many right things do you have to do to get to heaven? How many wrong things do you have to do to stay out? He said, confess your sins, admit you need a Savior, and his blood cleanses us from all sin. So I acknowledge, Lord, I'm a sinner. I don't care how good you are. I've said it many times, you know. You can be a good sinner or a bad sinner. You know, there's a difference. Some people look better sinning than others. Some people sin and don't look too bad. You say, well, they're nice people. Well, they're pretty good. They're all sinners. Good sinners, bad sinners come out sinners. We've all sinned and come short. We're all the same. We've all sinned and come short. We need a Savior. So we make that confession, Lord. I understand my condition. I'm separated from you. I'm a sinner. I need you. Come into my life. I accept the price that you paid for me. You sacrificed your blood for my sins. As much as that doesn't make sense to me, I accept that. And we accept what he's done for us. Prayers of confession, probably one of the most important. Whether we've never known him or whether we walk with him. You know, now, I don't believe that when a Christian sins that they're separated from God like he just says, okay, that's it. You're out of here. You know, he knows we err. He knows we don't walk perfectly. But it's not our desire to sin. And we never want to take advantage of his grace and his mercy. Don't, don't do that. Don't say, well, you know, if I sin, God will forgive me because that's what he does. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. I remember when people used to think that communion was a time when you, you kind of went all, all month and you kind of came to communion and you, you confessed your sins and you're good for another month. What's the fallacy in that? The fallacy is that is, I think I can then go out and sin some more, come back to God in 30 days, and he'll forgive me and then we go on again. His children don't think like that. His children don't think that. It's not my desire to sin. It's not my desire to take advantage of the grace and mercy of God. I have a relationship with him. I want to do his will and do what he wants. So next week we'll look at some other, some other aspects and times when we pray. You know, just to, you know, it's good, I think, once in a while to just remind us. 
It's good to reflect. It's good to think about. You know, sometimes I think it's good. He says, I acknowledge my sin. It's good to be honest with God and say, well, you know, show me. Show, show me if I've done something wrong. Show me what, what you want me to do. I acknowledge, I acknowledge I'm not perfect. Help me. Help me. He will. God is for us, not against us. It's not a game. He's for us. He's probably for us more than we are. You know, he wants us to be blessed and to succeed and do his will. He's for us. So I just encourage you as you, as you think about prayer, you know, just, just think about it this week. Think about, it. you know, talking to the Lord. Don't make it hard. I, I said it before that uh, pastor when I was a young man said it's just a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. You know, it's just a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. So we just need to be honest with him. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we have the privilege of being your children. And Lord, we can be your children because of what you've done for us. Not because of what we do. Not because of how good we are, but Lord, because of what you've done for us. That while we were still sinners, you died for us. And so, Lord, just help us to receive that, to be your children. And then, Lord, as your children, we thank you that we can come to you. We can come to you with our requests, with our prayers, with our needs, our concerns. And, Lord, we can come to you and that you're our Heavenly Father and you care about us. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. We just pray as you help us to go about our, our task this week, Lord, that we would remember to keep you at the head and at the top of what we we do and what we look at and what we think about lord just help us to pray without ceasing we just thank you for that in jesus name and everybody said amen